Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the subscribe button for us? It really does help us out. In today's video, we're going to look at a Neo Geo Color Pocket. It's a one of the more obscure handhelds that made it into the United States, but it's a very nice little system. But like a lot of the early 90s handhelds, the screen wasn't very good. This one wasn't even backlit, similar to a Game Boy Color. So the owner asked if there was anything we could do about it. Well, our friends over at Handheld Legends just released a new kit with a lot of options and touch sensors. So we decided to install one of those. If you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench, we have a Neo Geo Pocket Color. This is literally the only handheld I don't have in my personal collection. And uh, this one came to us today uh, because uh, like most of the color screens, you know, back in the early 90s or whatever, they weren't backlit like Game Boy Colors. And um, they were a little hard to see. And uh, so we've got these new modern IPS screens or or thin film uh, transistor types um, that are just so much better. So anyway, the owner of this one, and this one's real, real minty. Um, you know, he wanted to be able to see it better. Now, I've done a few installs on these before, but the kits prior, the screen was actually slightly smaller. Not much, but slightly. But it was still a great screen. This is the new kit from Handheld Legends that actually is, I believe they said 5% larger than the original screen. And I got a new glass lens for it, but this one is so pristine. And since it has the blue rim that matches, I think we're gonna hold off on putting the, the standard gray one in. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, oh, you know what? Before we get started, why don't I go ahead and turn it on just so you can get an idea of what the screen looks like. You can see it's not horrible, but here in the workbench with a lot of lighting, you know, that screen looks a lot nicer than it does in a dark living room. So anyway, that's where we're at. And we'll use that as a comparison for the end. And these aren't too bad to get into. Um, there's no special screws, as I recall. It's all Phillips. So I think a number one will work, and it will. Oh, there is, I forgot about that. There is a clock battery under that little door. We should probably take it out. I don't recall if it gets trapped or not otherwise. Uh, let's see. There we go. Hmm. Have to check that last one. All right, correction. There's one tri-wing screw, which is probably why the Phillips driver would not go in it. There we go. And we're out. Hmm. 
There we go. Let's set that aside. I've the few times I've been in to one of these, I found it easier just to go ahead and desolder the speaker wires, which are here. So get a soldering iron. right back into the solder. There we go. Okay, and we have just the one screw holding it, but this cap needs to come off so we can get the joystick out. And a couple spudgers usually does the trick. One on either side. like that. It's easier to pull it up straight than to try to grab it and bend it because it's actually kind of a, you can hear it. It's a tactile clicky joystick type, um, very arcade like, which is, uh, which is unusual for these little guys. So you definitely don't want to damage it. Okay, and that should be everything. Yeah, and now we're in it. So, as you can see, there's our back screen, or our LCD. And all we gotta do is release the bail. And get our screen out, like that. There we go. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This one is absolutely clean. Absolutely, absolutely clean. I mean, look at that. I don't think this one was ever played much. Matter of fact, it came to me in the box. Um, now, yeah. Game Boy Colors, Neo Geo Pockets. Do the uh, ice cube or the ice tray trick. Give it a little tweak. You can get behind it. You can pop the original out without a problem. Um, now, I will say this. This kit did come with a few wires, um, but it's my understanding that this version of the board here has these two um, you know, proximity touch detectors. And we don't have to do any soldering if we want, don't need to. So what we're gonna do is the install without the soldering and um, we'll see if we get all the functionality. And as long as we do, we'll leave it as is. Okay, so for the new screen to fit, now mind you, these IPS screens, unlike the, uh, our standard uh, you know, LCDs, these have a lot of thick glass and they have a small metal frame around them. They're really pretty tough. You can break them, but they're tough. These new IPS displays, there's almost nothing to them. There's a very, very thin piece of glass and a plastic frame and the reflector. If you're rough on this and you twist it, it's done. Matter of fact, in the kit, it says to check that before doing assembly. So. You know what, before we chop up our case, why don't we do that? Let's just go ahead and give her a test. We use the back so we can get to our batteries. Let's verify how this screen was in. Okay, our contacts were down. Our 
tri-pass panel. And here's our Lego connector. You just want to make sure it's lined up before pushing too hard. It's plastic. It can be damaged if you're rough with it. Get something just to lay under there as an insulator. Just a, anything. There we go. All right, and our power button is this one here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. And it looks like everything's working fine there. Let's go ahead and gently take it apart. We'll set it aside. Get these batteries back out. And we can work on our shell. Now some of the parts that came with are some insulating materials. And it says what to do with them and a sticker to apply our IPS screen. Okay, so what we need to do, we need some flush cut. We need to take out these two top tabs, but leave this one here. And then we need to take out the bottom. What's the best way to do this? I'll probably cut it into a couple pieces. We'll get a knife and just score it across the bottom. And it's just that easy. <laughs> um, all right, we got a little bit of a high spot there. So let's just make sure we get all of that out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Make sure there's no dust on the inside of this. Okay. We'll take our... Ugh. Those get blurry if you're not just doing up close work. But they're very good for, let's see, which way is this going to go? I believe it's going to go this way. All right, so what we're going to do, you can see this tab here, right here. This is going to be our lineup point. Matter of fact, I want to clean up just a little bit more.
Okay, I just want to make sure I get those, those out. So this tab here is going to be our alignment point. And now we could probably carefully remove our cover. And let's see. I'm going to line it up with that tab. Like that. Okay. Now, even though the other tape is still there, let's go ahead and put on this fresh layer. So I think what it's going to be is the thickest of them. It's going to be to the top. And then we'll have thin sides. If I can get it to stop sticking to me. <laughs> All right, there we go. Where's our cut lines? Here's our cut lines. Okay. And we may just want to do it this way. There we go. And something to press it down with. Make sure to get that sticky part out of the middle. There we go. Should probably remove that first. But then again, it does pick up all the, uh, the dust. Okay, so we're gonna align this with that pin. Like that. And that should be how our screen fits. Okay. So what do we got here? Back to the PCB. Back to the screen. And let's get our Lego clip back in. There we go. Okay. Now, come back and get our circuit board. I will have to say these new displays 
they've, you know, the companies that are making them have just really done a nice job of how everything, oh, you know what? We shouldn't put this in yet. Since this says, put that on the back of the PCB, that's what we need to do. Probably like that. But this one already has a circuit board protector on it. So we could slide it into our ribbon connector like that. Just make sure it's straight. Lock the bail. Make sure all our buttons are back in. There's our power button. Now normally if um, this was showing some age, I would be cleaning these contacts, but honestly, this just doesn't need them. Get our speaker wires. If you forget where this one screw goes, there's actually a white ring on the circuit board around it. Okay. So that's that. Let's look at this. Here's our cartridge slot. We can, what can we do with these? See if there's some tape on them or if it's just cladding. No. No? Maybe. Yep, okay. So what we're going to do, these actually have some, these are foil tape. So what we're going to do is we're gonna turn that over and we're going to put it under there. Just kind of stick it in place. I'm going to do the same with this one. Be careful with these. It's just copper foil tape. So getting this backing off is a little tricky. And okay, there's no bridge in there. So we can do the same here on this one. We can just sit it, sit it under there and kind of push it in place like that. And like that. Okay. Make sure all our buttons are through. Oops. <laughs> It'll work a whole lot better if we put the uh, speaker wires back on. We just did a Atari Lynx uh, screen 
and we uh, got verification from the owner after the, we did the install, there was no sound, but we got verification from the owner that he bought it and never actually checked it, but he bought it with um, a group of, of uh, handhelds that had known issues. So I told him no problem. What we had to do, we wound up replacing the um, amplifier ICs in it. So, okay. So now we got a speaker again. Let's just go ahead and put in a couple screws just to test it real quick. And the one tri wing goes down in this hole. So I'll just put some in in opposite corners. We can put our battery back in. Well, I guess we should verify that battery. So if we're in it, we'll give the owner a new battery if he needs it. Oh, we got three volts even. It's good. It's a little low, but probably last a couple more years. And we can put our joystick cap back on. Clean our screen. Put in some batteries. Let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. English. Yes. Black and white. Red. Green. I'll go with green. So anyway, there it is. I'm going to get through this real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So I just wanted to get through the, the menus quickly just to get it set up so we can be, you know, in our, in a pocket menu. And I can show you the features of the screen. So we put the two touch sensors up in here. And what this one's gonna do, as we touch it, there it is. It runs us through 10 levels of brightness. Also, if we hold it, We get a small battery indicator up in this top corner of the screen. Um, how accurate it is, or, I don't know, but these are fresh batteries and it looks full. So holding it again should shut it off. And it does. This side changes the color palettes, which are also adjustable inside the um, Neo Geo's menus. If we come back to our regular colors, and we hold it, it'll go from a pixel mode, which is artificial pixelated, to our clean IPS display. And that's it. So, tell me what you think. Do you like modern screens in old consoles? I sure do, because I like to play these old consoles. Um, I personally don't like to do heavy modifications to you know, vintage stuff, but everything to this was internal. And it's not like we had to drill holes or cut anything external. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, why don't you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions about this mod, make some comments down below. And um, I appreciate you being here and watching my videos, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.